Now, the second part is that this group of people, what this group of people at People's Platform did that really impressed me, other than their interpersonal skills, I swear they made everybody so happy around them. People, they related so well to people. I'm like, everyone gravitated toward them. I wanted to be like them. And they, they read 15 minutes a day at least, which means that their brains are happy because they're being stimulated because what they read was for personal enrichment, not garbage. It's okay to read fiction too, but fit in something that makes your brain happy. That was a learning curve for me, but it makes a big difference because bored brains equal bored people equals not so nice people. All right, now about that media holiday. What was that about? Well, they said, try to abstain from reading the internet, people on the internet, or watching TV, maybe listening to the radio or the news, but just see what you feel like. Because at that time, most people we hung out with and the people who were trying to improve themselves were basking in TV watching at least an hour a day. I was watching it probably once a week. I used to watch it daily. And I'd listen to the news. I listened to different radio stations, like 95% of the population. What amazed me was how much it influences me when I do watch. For example, Modern Family, if you might remember, it's three families, three different generations. Uh, well, the essence of it is there was this couple that we would watch. There's about a 20 year age difference between them. I suddenly can't remember the character's names, but it was a Latin American actress and uh, her American husband. She was very type A choleric, as you just learned, and he was more phlegmatic, like you just heard, sort of chill out. And I noticed, okay, I hadn't watched them in weeks because I was doing this media holiday, but Norm and I took a break from it and indulged in a half hour of Modern Family TV watching. This is not to bash Modern Family. I still think they're kind of cool. And on a side note, when, uh, the girl Lily on there is my former improv instructor's daughter, Amy Anderson's daughter. Yay! Okay, what happened after a half hour, just a half hour of TV watching was I morphed into, I think her name was Gloria. She had spent the good half hour of TV nagging her husband. It's like, ah, oh, do you have to put your feet there? Oh, I just washed this, this cup. Oh man, could you, why do you put your dirty dishes there? Why do you put your feet there? Oh honey, could you move it? Sure, Gloria. And I turned off the TV and no joke, I started nagging at my husband, Norm. Not necessarily the same subject matter, but the same, just, uh, I thought, what happened? What happened was I absorbed what I just watched. Frightening, isn't it? There's also a book called Influencer, which gives examples of this. In fact, TV show producers know so well how much they influence us that they create shows to cover certain topics to reach audiences better. Like on a more, even more useful note, during the first part of the COVID pandemic, there was a great increase in domestic abuse. And in Britain, one of the TV shows created an episode about a couple, I think, that was experiencing domestic abuse. And at the end of the show, and I heard this actually, I think, on NPR, that at the end of that show, there was a toll-free number given for the spouse to reach out if they need help. They knew how to get their audience. They created the, I don't know if I'd say sitcom, but that program, that specific intent and they reach their audience that way. It's, it's amazing. There's several examples of that kind of influence through the book Influencer. Read it. Now the other more positive uh, example I have of how not necessarily abstaining from media, but 
being around just how our environment impacts us. Because that's what I was studying with this group was, how is my environment impacting how I feel? And a friend of ours went to a coffee shop and he noticed that after a half hour, what is it about that half hour? <laughs> half hour of sitting there, he hadn't even been listening to the music that was playing in the background. He leaves the coffee shop and no joke, he started humming the tune that had been playing in the background of the coffee shop. Nothing bad, nothing annoying, but that says how much it gets into your psyche. We're sponges. So even though you th if you think that, oh, nothing affects me, I just watch commercials, I don't hear them, I don't listen to them, get real. We get impacted. Unless maybe you turn the volume down because a lot of the emotion is in the music. And even, what was the other example? Well, I have noticed, for example, that I used to listen to a lot of podcasts about networking. And I happened to be at the top of a region when I was uh, networking a lot more vigorously. Uh, it turned out that with, this, with the international organization that I was with, that I was at the top of their region as far as score, as far as ability to connect people, get business for people, invite people, etc. I was really excited, I was surprised, and I was contacted by the head of the region and was asked to teach what I had learned or what I, what I was doing to get this success, to teach it to a couple different groups of small business owners. And I thought, well, geez, what have I been doing to get this success? I, in large part, I've been pounding, listening nonstop to podcasts about different aspects of networking. And that really affected my environment, especially when I did Instacart shopping during the day and needed something to listen to in between or in between networking interviews. And I just wanted to be an excellent networker. Well, people aren't always ready to accept what their environment has to offer. And it's a habit. I, I tried to teach the habit to some small business owners it seemed to be hard to download the software or whatever it was, and they weren't ready. They weren't ready to adopt the habit. It is a habit, but you gotta see what it is you are listening to, because you end up listening to something. I mean, if maybe if it's dead air, is it enough for your brain? Do you need more stimulation? Are you doing something else to stimulate your mind, like eating? I mean, make sure that what you're listening to creates the stimulation you need to be your best. That's the point. I was astounded to see that that was what had one of the main things that got me ahead in which they, many, many, not all, but many were reluctant to do. But those who did, did have success. Whether it was getting more business or more visitors, it was interesting to see it. A question for you. What puts you in a good mood? Or shall we say, what in your household what in your environment puts you in a really good mood? Hopefully you can find something. In my case, pictures of my husband, I'm looking at that, or just coming in and knowing this is my home, the colors are nice, we have an accent colored wall in front of me that's kind of salmon colored. Our plants put me in a good mood, they're all over here. What puts you in a good mood? Make a note of it. Maybe you need more of it around you or just be aware of it. Okay, so the other part of environment would be when, now that you have figured out that you want to be comfortable around other people and the way to do that, those are the, some of the things you just heard about, okay? Well, people impact each other even with money. What I have learned, one of my biggest aha moments throughout all this learning was that it's funny what people do to feel important. I got this book, Financial Fitness, by two amazing entrepreneurs, Chris Brady and Orrin Woodward. And throughout the very short chapters, I was learning that I had done a lot of things to feel important, to fulfill that basic human need. 
Namely, many, many years ago when I was in another business, I invested in a type of mentorship because I wanted to hobnob with the best of them, thinking, oh, if we invest in this level of membership, then we're going to hear the best information. Oh my God. That caused me thousands of dollars of debt. And while you might say, well, this business debt, debt is debt. Come on. It's no more holy just because it's a business. Yes, it might be tax deductible and during the, during the accounting year, but you still end up having to pay it off. The main thing is, why do you buy into certain things? I had to step back and think about that. I'm going, is there some other way to get the same information, same mentor or same learning without investing that much? And what will it net me? What, what am I getting for it? And in some cases I ended up getting boxes and boxes worth of product that did not motivate me at all to sell it. It just sat in the basement. Ugh. Well, not in the basement, uh, in the garage. You get the idea. Say, what do we do to feel important? It, it turns up in our finances. I see also parents making the mistake of buying into ideas or buying uh, items for their kids or they bring their kids along shopping. And the kids the kids are quite the consumers, I must say. They point out what they want and the, kid, the parents want to please the kids and they buy it. Be careful of that. I mean, I'm thinking, well, aren't the parents the ones who decide what the nutrition is for the household? That's a big decision to have the kid do. The other thing was not realizing what is an investment versus an expense. I thought, or what an asset is. I used to think my condo was an asset. And my husband looked at me and said, do you have renters? Well, no, that it's not an asset. It's not making you money. It's an investment. Yeah, okay. I just, I didn't learn that much about money in school. I thankfully learned to save money from my dad's fine example. I just, my only saving grace with money since I hadn't been earning a whole lot was that I hate shopping, except for maybe booze and books and and I really don't buy much booze I just think it's pretty actually the packaging is beautiful and it is the I don't I mean, don't even like shopping for booze much because I don't know what to buy but it's pretty and I, I just I get so overwhelmed that's the ADHD part of me I get really overwhelmed with shopping even online it's just too much stuff even online which is actually why people's platform has been helpful for me because all the savings is under one roof. I pay 30 bucks a month to get all the savings clustered for me and I get trip credits for it. Thank you, people's platform. I just, it's been astounding. The other thing I noticed with money that I promised to give you some tips was even an insight with financial fitness and with the people we hung out with from people's platform who guided us through this, and no, it's not Dave Ramsey. God bless Dave Ramsey, but this is way beyond that. I had no idea how pre, pre-COVID, how stuck people were. If you're getting the impression that everyone is so much better off than you are, no. Pre-COVID, people were, the mass, mass uh, majority of people were pretty darn messed up. I have not really been in the habit of using credit cards except for when I was in business years ago and messed up because I couldn't find my statements, another ADHD trait. Not, not proud of it. I lost them all over the place and therefore had late charges. I, I did not realize though how messed up people's finances were and how even those who seem to be going on vacation all the time, once again, pre-COVID, people have been so messed up, they don't realize how much faking it there is out there. It was really eye-opening. I had no idea how many people had car payments. Don't save it all. They may look like they earn a lot, because you assume if they're physicians, they earn a lot. Well, what happens with the money though? Do they keep it or do they spend it? Or the ones who have a sports car but never use it because they don't have time, or they can't afford the insurance. 
the point is, I was astounded by how much people either thought they had to keep up appearances or made assumptions about what other people could afford or what's needed. Whether it is, I deserve an XYZ or finance your fun. Are you kidding me? Finance something that's going to depreciate in a month? And define the word deserve. I, I was just astounded. I, in my case, our family is so darn frugal that it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I hardly, we had trouble with credit cards in the sense that we didn't realize that we needed to have a credit history. My parents had a hard time, uh, would have had a hard time buying their first home if they hadn't had solid jobs in the 70s. And they're from different countries, so it was a whole different ballgame. But yeah, it was an eye-opener for me. And I'm actually grateful that because of COVID, that it came out in the open. I got sick of people faking it. The only, the only people who seemed to be real about what their situation was, was hanging out with the people who used financial fitness. So it was greatly needed. Most financial advisors didn't even want to look at the book because they thought, this is not what we learned. And there was one financial advisor who wanted to partner up with people who were debt free completely. She couldn't find them. They didn't, they hardly existed. Debt free and with a cushion. Debt free is one thing if you're starving because you have paid everything off and have no savings. <laughs> no, I mean, they have a cushion. Anyhow, point being, think about what it is that you're doing to make yourself feel important or to make up for something for not being for, there for somebody or to feel better about yourself or for, in my case, I end up spending a lot on certain foods because I didn't take the time to prepare my own. It, yeah, it's the list goes on and on. And even how about when you don't value enough what you're capable of? I had a client who was helping with resumes and I said, wow, that's quite the skill. She said, yeah, I feel it's good to volunteer and I suppose I could charge. And I said, well, what about both? I mean, half, maybe you volunteer for a few people and then for others you charge. I mean, let's not undervalue our skills. That's why I'm wanting to even have a referral business because I'm really good at it and I might as well get paid for the service. But yes, I do like volunteering too. So well, anyway, you've got these two parts that you've heard about with people, with finances, and now removing chaos. And think about habits. Well, my one of my favorite habits, new habits, like as of three years ago, well, relatively new, was meditation. Think about what's one of your favorite habits that gets you ahead or that makes you as happy as possible. A habit being anything that you do on a regular basis, like daily or almost every day. Think about it and write it down. But that I give you a few seconds. The reason I think that meditation, no, I know that meditation is super important is that you get in so much chaos in your life whether it's with people, finances, and notice how often your relationship with people impacts your finances. If you're not relating so well, maybe you're paying for it, or maybe you're trying to impress people, you're paying for it, you get the idea. All right, and all that causes chaos. And since our culture values busyness, as in, Constantly having something to do, it's, it seems to be a catchphrase for American culture. Oh, I'm so busy. Because we want to feel important. We equate it with being important. The more you have to do, the more important you are. Because after all, someone needs us. And we all want to be needed to some extent. But when you go through all those activities in life, think of it like a buffet. An overstuffed buffet. All those events. Well, what happens when you overeat at a buffet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to barf. 
or you just get constipated. And just like you're supposed to eat a lot of broccoli to sweep out everything, get it through your system, think of meditation as broccoli for the brain. I always thought, well, geez, I have ADHD. How am I going to sit still for even 10 minutes to meditate? But I want to try it. I never said anything about sitting still. I learned about Ascension Meditation about three years ago. I'll put my instructor's name in the comments, or you can just contact me, look up the About section on my YouTube channel. Main thing is, meditation is so amazing because it clears your mind and and helps you come up with solutions to your everyday problems. It's unbelievable. You can do it sitting, standing, sleeping, however, but it's vital. I credit so many of my epiphanies to that. You're still important. It's not like you have to keep doing things. Plus, it's part of the financial trap to keep us busy. American society isn't a trap, a financial matrix, as Warren Woodward calls it. The busyness is part of the trap to keep us busy. I mean, the busyness is part of the trap to keep us financially stuck. I have been so amazed by what meditation does for me. I do it three times a day, 20 minutes at a time. The main thing is I do it for an hour somehow. So does my husband, Norm. I had at least two insights recently about what I want to do with my life based on having meditated, calming my mind. It's like having a nap without feeling drunk when you wake up. Because that's what I noticed about taking naps. I, usually, I used to feel gross after waking up from a nap, like just mental fog for a half hour. But with meditation, I feel so refreshed. One of my insights was that I need to, I was, after I'd been at an airport this summer for maybe a half hour, no, six hours actually of lay, layover, I was surrounded by languages and I thought, I miss learning, hearing, using languages. I miss it. It's a core part of my being. I speak Spanish, German, Hungarian, and obviously English. We all have some talents. That one's mine. I just love it. And I thought, wow, I have really missed it. I still have it. I just need to brush up on my skills. But because of meditation, that's one thing I realized I was really missing. And the other thing was to do this talk. I realized, wow, I need to somehow bring it to the people, this, release it to the environment. So in closing, think about how your environment impacts you. Think about what you can do better for yourself in 2022 with money, because it doesn't matter necessarily how much you make, it's how much you keep and how much you give, like donating, and how you look at it, how you view it. What did you grow up with? What, did, what comments did you hear about money? You don't have to be broke and you don't have to work your ass off to bring in so much. It is possible to earn a living without being constantly busy. It is possible. And it is possible to get more out of life even if you're not making a million. It's just look at what your just observe what your attitudes are about money. That's what I've been doing. So think about people, how you relate to them. Think about money and how you relate to it, and give a chance to meditation. I'm really excited for 2022, and thank you for tuning in. This past 11 days have been a bit hair raising, coming up with tips. It's been enlightening. It's been fun. It's been scary. Go be vulnerable. Go be awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Happy New Year. Bye-bye.